Tomo News presents Space Missions. Getting up close and personal with the sun. NASA has sent a probe to fly closer to the sun's surface than any man-made object has ever gone. But unlike other space missions, this one includes a long and complex orbit. Apparently, it's not that easy to get to the fiery ball at the center of our solar system. The Earth travels 67,000 miles per hour in a sideways motion relative to the Sun to avoid being pulled into it, so any object traveling to the Sun must cancel that motion. NASA's Parker Solar Probe must drop 53,000 miles per hour of sideways speed. In addition to being launched by the powerful Delta IV heavy rocket, it will perform seven Venus flybys over a seven-year period, relying on the planet's gravity to draw its orbit closer to the Sun. The probe is then set to fly through the heated solar atmosphere called the corona to understand and be able to predict the behavior of solar winds. If all goes according to plan, the Parker Solar Probe will make its first close pass at the Sun in November. Private German Moon Mission to Inspect Apollo 17 Rover a team of scientists in Germany has developed a lunar rover that will soon fly to the moon and visit the legendary Apollo 17 lunar rover vehicle. The rover, dubbed Audi Lunar Quattro, is made of aluminum and titanium and was created almost entirely with 3D printing technology. It is equipped with Audi's four-wheel drive technology, solar panels, rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, and science-grade high-definition cameras. Two rovers will be carried by the Alina spacecraft, which stands for the Autonomous Landing and Navigation Module. Alina will also carry several other payloads, including a lunar planned growth experiment. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will likely be used to transport the rovers into space. Alina will touch down about five kilometers from the Apollo 17 in the Taurus Lithrow Valley. After landing, the two rovers will be deployed and travel toward the Apollo 17 lunar rover. However, they are not allowed any closer than 200 meters from the Apollo rover, per NASA's request. The rovers will send live HD pictures of the Apollo rover back to Earth. The scientists are one of the 16 teams competing for the $30 million Google Lunar X prize. However, they said the ultimate goal wasn't really to win the money, but to reach the Apollo 17 rover. SpaceX aims to reach Mars by 2018. After much teasing, SpaceX finally announced a launch date for its mission to Mars, and it's in the very near future. SpaceX is partnering with NASA to send a Red Dragon, a modified Dragon 2 capsule, on a mission to Mars by 2018. The company has been delivering cargo to the International Space Station since 2012, but the Red Planet is 560,000 times farther away. Instead of the Falcon 9, the Red Dragon will be launched using the more powerful Falcon Heavy rocket. But while launching the rocket is relatively simple, the landing, especially on a planet like Mars, is where things get tricky. With a much thinner atmosphere than Earth's, there's a less cushion for incoming spacecraft, which increases the likelihood of a crash. The Dragon's heat shield can withstand temperatures over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, making it possible to safely enter and plummet through the Martian atmosphere. The capsule is also equipped with eight Super Draco engines, which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing in the Red Planet's service. which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing on the Red Planet's surface. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is set to reveal more details about the Mars launch at the International Astronautical Conference in September. Saturn Probe Enters Grand Finale NASA's Cassini spacecraft has begun the final stage of its mission after nearly 20 years traveling in space. The Cassini spacecraft entered its grand finale orbits between Saturn's cloud tops and the planet's rings on April 26, 2017. According to NASA, Cassini survived its first dive between Saturn and its innermost rings, sending back never-before-seen images of the planet's atmosphere, including this hurricane. During the dives, Cassini will measure ice and other content in Saturn's rings and take measurements from the planet's rocky core. Cassini will enter its final orbit on September 15th, in which it is expected to destroy itself by flying directly into Saturn's atmosphere. 
The Cassini spacecraft was launched in October 1997 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. It traveled 2.2 billion miles to reach Saturn. Private company Moon Express wins U.S. permission for moon mission. The U.S. government has granted a Florida-based company permission to launch a mission to the moon. The first time the government has allowed a company to conduct a commercial space mission beyond Earth's orbit. Cape Canaveral-based Moon Express will fly its MX-1 lander to the moon. The MX-1 is about the size of a coffee table. It will be launched sometime in 2017 on an Electron rocket, a rocket currently being built by startup Rocket Lab. The MX-1 will carry a scientific and commercial payload that includes cremated human remains. It will also transmit pictures and videos of the moon back to Earth. The spacecraft is solar powered and uses hydrogen peroxide as rocket fuel. Its missions include mining for resources such as water and helium-3. It can also serve as a refueling station for other satellites. At the moment, commercial satellites have only gone as far as the geosynchronous orbit about 22,000 miles above Earth. Only three nation states, the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China have landed spacecraft on the moon. However, the permission granted to Moon Express does not guarantee access for other private companies to the moon. The company said its permission was a one-time deal and that all future requests will be reviewed case by case until new laws are passed. NASA makes a discovery that could reveal something new about Mars's past. For the first time in four decades, NASA has found oxygen in Mars's atmosphere. But hold up, it's probably not the oxygen you're thinking of. Atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere was detected by a specialized 747 jetliner that flew between 37,000 feet to 45,000 feet above sea level in Earth's atmosphere. From our atmosphere, the plane measured the amount of atomic oxygen on Mars by using a spectrometer to observe far infrared waves on the planet. The oxygen atoms were found in one of the upper layers of Mars's atmosphere, known as the mesosphere. Atomic oxygen refers to a single oxygen atom and is different from the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, which involves two oxygen atoms. Atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere fits with scientists' belief that Mars was once warm and wet, with a thicker atmosphere capable of sustaining water and even life. But over time, solar winds are said to have stripped away Mars's atmosphere, causing the planet to become cold and barren. Studying the atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere will help scientists understand how and why the life-sustaining gases that once covered Mars billions of years ago has disappeared. Startup set to launch first commercial moon mission. A California space startup is set to gain government approval for the first private mission to the moon. California startup Moon Express is on the verge of U.S. approval to land on the moon in 2017. In October, the startup announced a deal with Rocket Lab USA for multiple manned missions to the moon. Their MX-1 lander spacecraft will travel aboard Rocket Lab's 52.5-foot tall Electron rocket for testing. Moon Express's MX-1 lander consists of a solar panel, pressure and tanks, and a payload deck. The small vehicle would deliver scientific hardware to the moon's surface. Moon Express is hoping to find and mine lunar resources, including platinum, titanium, and the rare isotope helium-3. Helium-3 is a light, non-radioactive isotope of helium, with two protons and one neutron, in contrast with two neutrons found in helium. This missing neutron allows helium-3 to produce clean energy. Nuclear fission splits an atom's nucleus in half, resulting in heat but also radioactive waste. Nuclear fusion combines nuclei to produce energy, though when tested with hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, both produced unsafe radioactive neutrons. On the other hand, helium-3 fusion is reportedly safe, one reaction process uses two helium-3 atoms to generate helium and two protons with no radioactive byproducts. Helium-3 doesn't occur naturally on Earth, but the Sun has been emitting it for billions of years, and some has accumulated on the Moon. 2.2 pounds of helium-3 combined with 1.5 pounds of deuterium produces 19 megawatt years of energy, 
25 tons of it could theoretically power the U.S. for an entire year. How Elon Musk Hopes to Ferry a Million People to Mars Billionaire Elon Musk has unveiled perhaps his biggest, most ambitious plan yet, colonizing the Red Planet with one million people. Using the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, SpaceX founder Elon Musk hopes to use a spacecraft composed of a 250-foot reusable rocket and 100-passenger spaceship to ferry humans back and forth to Mars. Musk envisions a thousand-strong Mars colonial fleet of these ships departing en masse. The rocket booster segment of the ITS will transport the spaceship to low Earth orbit. Both parts of the ITS would be made up of carbon fiber, while the rocket would be powered by 42 SpaceX Raptor engines. That same rocket would then return to Earth and launch again with a propellant tank. This tank then connects with the spaceship to refuel the vessel. The spaceship would use nine SpaceX Raptor engines as well as solar sails which gather energy from the sun on the 54.6 million kilometer journey to Mars. After transporting the cargo and passengers to Mars, the spaceship would refuel at the colony there and fly back to Earth. The cost of a ticket is currently estimated at 10 billion US dollars, but Musk hopes to get that down to below 200,000 or 0.002% of the current cost. Uh, yeah. Best of luck with that, Mr. Musk. Probe reaches asteroid after three-year cosmic journey. The Japanese space probe has reached its destination after traveling through space for three years. Reuters reports the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft blasted off in December of 2014. This week, it arrived at its destination, asteroid Ryugu, some three billion kilometers from Earth. Reuters reports Hayabusa 2 will orbit the asteroid for a few months in order to map its surface before it attempts a landing. NASA says asteroids are airless worlds that orbit the sun. They're not large enough to be termed planets. Scientists believe asteroid Ryugu may contain matter originating near the time of the Big Bang. The probe will use explosives and a cannon to craft a hole on the surface then collect from samples from the area. After the Hayabusa 2 has finished its work on the asteroid, the probe will begin a year and a half journey back to Earth. It's expected to return in 2020. NASA investigates the effects of space radiation on the body. One of NASA's biggest challenges in designing a mission to Mars is how to protect astronauts on the long space journey. NASA's human research program is currently researching how space radiation affects the human body. Space radiation has enough energy to violently collide with nuclei that make up spacecraft shielding and human tissue. The collisions cause both the shielding nuclei and space radiation to break up into several different types of new particles, known as secondary radiation. NASA is currently focusing on the effects of galactic cosmic rays on the human body. GCRs that come from supernovas outside the solar system are the most harmful to the body. One of the main difficulties is that it's hard to simulate space radiation on Earth. Lab doses of radiation could be stronger and given for a shorter time than actual conditions in space. 